Hi, I'm Arthur Haynes, and I'm here to share with you today one of the first wild edibles of the season, that being maple sap. Here in New England, this typically starts for the majority of us in March, in other words, in the late winter, going over into the early spring, and it is the cold nights that go below freezing, and then the warm days that get up into the 40s and 50s that give us the best sap flow. Maple sap is one of the truly great sweeteners because we can refine it with very simple methods, just using heat to let vapor escape, water vapor escape, and to give us a concentrated syrup. And it is really our only true wild sweetener that we can gather from this landscape. Unlike other refined sweeteners, it actually gives us a number of nutrients. That includes vitamin B2, which is riboflavin, and it's a very good source of the minerals manganese and zinc. And it's a lesser source, but still significant, of calcium, potassium, and magnesium. And unlike refined sugars, which use the body's stores of vitamins and minerals to deal with them, maple sap, when, especially when it's concerted to, converted to syrup, when the vitamins and minerals are in a concentrated form, gives us those things that our body needs to deal with this sweetener. We like to gather our own maple sap for a number of reasons. One, this is a phenomenal time to be outside. But maybe more importantly are the health benefits of doing it yourself. We gather our sap in maple buckets, as you can see here poured off into stainless steel pails and boiled in stainless steel buckets on our wood stove. What we're trying to do is to avoid the massive amount of plastic that's used in the industry now. Maple sap is collected in flexible plastic bags or is channeled through plastic tubing down to a collection reservoir. The problem here is these tubes can't be dried out effectively and they need to run disinfectants through them to clean them out. Further, all of these flexible plastic leach phthalates, which are endocrine disruptors, acting as xenoestrogens inside our body. And again, the civilized world takes a wonderful wild food and damages it and turns it into something that isn't quite as good as it could be for the human species. Being outside this time of year is really wonderful because the intensity of the sun is picking up, so the temperatures are mild during the day. Not to mention, we get to hear all the spring migrants returning. This week, returning from their winter grounds, we've heard American robins and common grackles flying over the head, and we've also had a chance to see American woodcocks in the bare places where they can access the mud. There are maple trees in New England that have been tapped consecutively for more than a century. So we know they're able to tolerate the small holes that we drill in them. And here on this property in Midcoast, Maine, the holes heal over in about three years. Of course, the outer bark still has a small hole where the drill was inserted, but the inner bark has closed that hole off completely. We still need to remember, however, to be conscientious collectors of sap and just because the maple tree can heal over the hole it doesn't mean that it doesn't need the sap and of course it does if you think about a person if you deprive it of nutrition and calories they are more prone to getting sick and they're less able to fight off infection and that is the same way with a maple tree if we take too much of the sap it is less able to fight off infectious agents. So please remember this rule. Trees need to be at least 25 centimeters diameter, that's 10 inches for one tap, and a second tap should not be placed in a tree unless it is more than 20 inches, uh, which is 50 centimeters diameter. And if a tree reaches 25 inches, or about 62 and a half centimeters in diameter, then it can take a third tap, but we place no more than three taps on a tree, no matter how large it is, to ensure that it has enough sap to allow its leaves to receive the nutrients they need so they can unfold in the spring. 
Today we use a metal spile that you see here, a hollowed metal tube that's been driven a short distance into the tree to capture some of the sap that's heading from the roots up the trunk to the expanding leaves and flower above where it forms the fuel that they need as well as the nutrients. Sap is collected in these buckets as you see here, in which case we get to pour it off and boil this down into syrup. Now the natives of this area, we know very little about how they gathered the maple sap. Unfortunately, they were either driven off or killed before this type of information, their food collection, was performed. Fortunately, we have some good information on the Anishinaabe of the Great Lakes region. And rather than buckets, of course, they made containers out of bark from paper birch, which sat on the ground to gather the sap from a wound that they had placed in the tree. Of real interest, though, is we tend to store the processed maple sap as maple syrup. This is something very easy for us to do today because we have glass jars that can form an airtight seal. This is something that the natives did not have. And what we find is they stored the processed maple sap as maple sugar, a dried, granulated sweetener. This, of course, could be stored in other bark containers that kind of resemble a pouch or a purse, which they could then trade as a commodity for things they needed or use in the foods that they ate. One of the nice things about small-scale sap collection is that you can let the temperature do some of the work for you. If you leave your recently collected sap out overnight, on the cold nights, it will partially freeze. And that ice that you see here is pure water, and it actually leaves the sugars behind so that you can concentrate your sap without using any heat, in other words, any energy from the wood stove or what have you to form your syrup. Now this will only work to a point because uh, once the syrup to be becomes too concentrated, it simply won't freeze anymore, but this does work initially. One of the great uses of maple sap is as a spring drink or a spring tonic. When it comes out of the tree, it's clear and very cold. And remember that it contains trace vitamins and minerals, which makes it a great wild food unto itself. So even if you don't have the ability to reduce the sap into syrup, please get out there and collect it anyways. You can store it in, in mason jars for days in the refrigerator or outside because it's very cool this time of year and you can simply use it as you would use spring water except there's a bit more nutrition packed into this.